It's a stunning development in the business world overnight. Bob Iger is back at the top of Disney just two years after retiring from a legendary run. He replaces his own successor, Bob Chapek, after the company suffered a disappointing earnings last quarter. And that's not it. Chapek has had a rocky tenure. It has included very public battles with Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis, the most public involving the state's controversial bill restricting LGBTQ topics in the classroom. Chapek was heavily criticized for not coming out forcefully and immediately against it, like Iger did, actually. Iger spoke with our own Chris Wallace about this all a few months ago. Listen. A lot of these issues are not necessarily political. It's about right and wrong. So I happen to feel, and I tweeted a, an opinion about the Don't Say Gay bill in Florida. To me, it wasn't politics. It was what is right and what is wrong. And that just seemed wrong. It seemed potentially harmful to kids. Listen also to how Iger responded earlier this year when our friend and tech journalist Kara Swisher asked him about, by the way, what just happened about potentially coming back. Here they were. But one of the things the CNBC polled 10 media executives anonymously about their 2022 predictions, and one was that you'll return to Disney. As, as what? I don't know. <laughs> A Mickey Mouse I would love, character. Uh, yes, there I, are rumors that you could I, become Disney CEO again. Well, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. I, I was CEO for a okay. long time. You All can't right. go home again. I'm gone. Really? It's happened I gave before. My ID Starbucks. Bed, I gave my ID up, my name tag up. Okay. My office, my email address. It's all gone. No. I think if I wanted to run a company, I'd still be running Disney. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, I did that. Well, now he is. Joining us now, CNN Media Analyst, Sarah Fisher. Sarah, it's great to have you. I was reading through your reporting this morning. Um, Chapek's had a rocky run. But the fact that Iger is coming back in to help Disney really get it off its knees. They face so many troubles. Tell us what you know. Yeah, well, I think these two have had a rocky relationship for the past two years. A report came out in the New York Times that sort of asserted that Bob Iger wanted to come back and bring more control to the company amid the coronavirus pandemic. I think it's been hard for those two executives to be on the same page ever since. But Poppy, what this really suggests to me is a weakness on the side of the Disney board. You know, mm. Bob Iger had 15 years as CEO to choose a successor to groom him so that Wall Street would take a liking to him. And now him coming back, Bob Chapek didn't even get a proper goodbye to do that process all over again and choose another successor is pretty outstanding to me, especially given the fact that Bob Chapek's contract was voted unanimously on by the board to be extended for another three years just a few months ago in June. I think the way, look, I remember Bob's book just a few years ago and he wrote in it, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Mm -hmm. And that example of how to deal with the DeSantis, the bill in Florida, right? Chapek waffled for a long time and employees got so mad and they left and they walked out and Iger right away said, no, this is wrong. This isn't politics. Is that emblematic of his leadership versus Chapek's just big picture? I think so. And I think you're pointing to one of the most contentious points between the two. At the time, Bob Iger, you pointed to that great interview with Chris Wallace on CNN, said that this is something he full throatedly disagreed with. And Disney's leadership under Chapek was still waffling, which put them at odds publicly. And so I think that, yes, Bob Iger was definitely a more decisive leader. I think he was much more in tune to the culture at Disney. But that doesn't necessarily mean that Chapek had been completely failing over the past two years. In fact, Disney had grown at one point to have its subscriber base surpass Netflix's. And while they had a bad quarter, Poppy, the trend lines had not been anything new. Yes, streaming losses had been mounting and Wall Street was growing frustrated with it, but it's not like this is something that just happened out of the blue. These are trend lines that have been happening for the past few years. And to me, I'm sort of shocked that this replacement is happening so quickly after JPEG's mm. contract was just renewed. Sir, there's always what's being reported and what we hear about in the press, but there's behind the scenes. Is there something behind the scenes that we don't know about? There's sort of two things happening. One is that a bunch of activist investors are starting to mount bigger positions within Des Disney, Nelson Peltz, Dan Loeb. You know, the Dan Loeb fight got very public when he tried to pressure Disney's board to, you know, maybe come up with new leadership, but also to possibly spin out ESPN+. Plus. And Bob Chapek was able to stave that off. But, you know, a new reporting from the Wall Street Journal about a different activist investor staking a big stake in Disney could put more pressure on the company at this critical time. 
And then, of course, Don, what I was just noting before, the tensions between these two executives behind the scenes, sources told me, was palpable. You know, it's not like there was one big blow-up fight, but they just weren't really communicating. And, of course, Iger was not publicly endorsing Chafik's strategy all that much. Sarah Fisher, thanks very much for being with us.